even the executive arm of government to barge in into the legislative arm, you know, uninvited. I want to state very clearly that the governor of River State, you know, came in to the um, legislative chambers uninvited. He came in with talks who jumped into the um, state assembly, you know, broke the keys and uh, made ways, now cut all the chains there to open the gate for the governor to come in. What kind of uh, government is that? We are saying that um, in all decency, what the governor ought to have done was to write um, the legislative chamber, you know, that he wants to come to the uh, uh, state assembly, which is the right channel and the right thing to do, not to bandit um, uh, talks who will jump in and break the gate, you know. And again, recall that this state assembly we are talking about was just built two years ago. So what is informing the demolition? Uh, you know, we are worried about the, the, the happenings in River City. We are worried because we are a coalition of civil society organization that is embedded in good governance and the rule of law. What is the rule of law? We are saying that it has to be the supremacy and predominance of the law in any given state of society or society. But what we are seeing in River State in the mildest possible term is not synonymous with modern democracy. We are seeing a situation where the governor of River State is spending money outside appropriation. Where is it done? Who does that? We are seeing a situation in River State where the governor, you know, withhold council funds for so several months. Then the governor suddenly, a few um, uh, last week or so, decided to pay a few persons, you know, directly negating the constitutional uh, um, allowed uh, authorities, provided authorities that ought to have paid. River State government has local gov elected local government chairman. So why who authorize him to pay directly? Some of these things, we as rights group, we are also going to challenge it in a court of competent jurisdiction. Because what is happening in River State has never happened anywhere in the, in the history of this country. And it is a complete desecration of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we cannot fold our hands and watch such things thrive as it affects the, the, the happenings in River State. So thank you. The Center for Credible Leadership and Citizens Awareness is a coalition of over 92 civil rights organizations committed to good governance, upholding the principles of justice and the rule of law as the watchdog of the society, has been watching with keen interest the latest unfolding events in River State, Nigeria, which by the mildest possible term is not synonymous to true democracy and democratic principles in line with global peace practice. The rift between the executive arm of government, the legislative arm of government, and in fact, the local government, duly elected local government chairman, you know, and the actions of the chief executive officer of River State, which is akin to anarchy, is becoming worrisome. Firstly, Honorable Justice J.K. Omotosho of the Federal High Court, Abuja, gave a judgment stating that the assembly led by Right Honorable Martin Samewule is recognized by law and certified by the court. In order four given by Justice J.K. Omotosho, the 11th defendant, which is the governor of River State, in suit number FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 1613 slash 2023 between the River State House of Assembly and Right Honorable Amewule and others states that the 11th defendant, that is the governor of River State, is prohibited from making any request, presentation, or nomination to any other house of assembly other than that
that led by Right Honorable Martin Samewule, this judgment is sus this judgment is subsisting and this judgment has not been set aside. In another suit pending before the FCT High Court in suit number FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 1681 slash 2024 before Honorable Justice Okoro between the River States House of Assembly and the INEC concerning the defection of the 27 Assembly members, the court gave an injunction restraining the INEC and the defendants from declaring the seats vacant and from proceeding to conduct elections to fill any vacancy. The first judgment made by Honorable Justice J.K. Omotosho is still subsisting and has not been set aside. The second order made by Honorable Justice Okoro has not been vacated. Now, the order made by Justice C. N. Welly of the River State High Court, recognizing the three lawmakers, contradicts clearly the provisions of Section 272, Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, which states very clearly that state high courts has no jurisdiction to entertain matters bordering on the tenure of state assembly. This means that the River State High Court also does not have jurisdiction to make any order pertaining the tenure of assembly members. In other words, the order made by Justice C. N. Wally amounts to forum shopping, abuse of court process, and this tantamount to self-help. Consequently, as a coalition of rights organizations, we cannot allow such threats to our hard-earned democracy to thrive in Nigeria, where we operate a constitutional democracy, where the rule of law stipulates the supremacy and predominance of the law, and where it has to be uh, followed to the letter. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about a purported assembly where three persons parade themselves as lawmakers for the entire state, contradicting clearly the provisions of Section 96, Subsection 1, as amended of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which defines one third as what constitutes a quorum. If for any reason, according to the dictates of the Constitution, if for any reason the Assembly cannot form a quorum, the Assembly shall adjourn. It is never the intendment of those who crafted the 1999 Constitution that only three lawmakers shall be enacting laws for the people. The National Judicial Council, the NJC, as a body empowered to regulate the discipline of erring judicial officer, has recently slammed its hammers on three erring judges by issuing them with a warning letter. This letter prohibits them from any form of elevation until such warnings are lifted. It becomes imperative, therefore, that we call on the NJC to beam its searchlight on Honorable Justice C. N. Wally of the River State High Court for issuing an ex parte order contradicting clearly the provisions of Section 272, Subsection 3 of the 1999 Constitution and violating a subsisting judgment made by Justice J.K. Omotosho stating that the assembly led by Right Honorable Martin Samewule is the assembly that is recognized by law and is certified by court. What we are saying essentially is that uh, Honorable Justice uh, C.N. Wally has contradicted you know, the provisions of the law. He is a custodian of the law. He is a jurist of repute. So we expect that he ought to have known um, the provisions of the constitutions more than any of us. And because he has contradicted clearly uh, the provisions of the constitution, we are saying that um, the NJC should beam its satellite on Honorable Justice uh, C.N. Wally uh, because 
he has deliberately contradicted the provisions of the constitution and uh, for the abundance of doubt we have done a petition uh, um, to the NJC you know against uh, right at the Honorable Justice C.N. Wally uh, for this deliberate act of his and uh, if need be we will also as a coalition will go to court uh, to seek redress because it is a clear aberration of the of provisions of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Again, the chief executive officer, that is the chief executive of River State, has relocated the legislative arm of government, an institution of government, to commence sitting inside the government house. This singular act is not consistent with the principles of separation of power. A complete aberration desecration and denigration of our constitution. Again, the purported screening of the senior advocate of Nigeria, Dagogo Iboroma, with the greatest respect, before an illegitimate House of Assembly is an affront to the integrity of our legal system and a contemptuous act towards court's judgment. The Federal High Court in suit number FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 16 13 slash 2023 clearly ruled that the only the assembly led by Right Honorable Amewule is the assembly that is uh, that will determine who their clerk is. We urge Dagogo Ibroma SAN and all leaders of the bar to uphold the sanctity of the law and refrain from participating in actions that undermine the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the authority of the Federal Courts. Despite the unambiguous provisions of Section 272, Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, without vacating a subsisting order, has gone ahead perpetrating illegality and contempt of court. Furthermore, we deplore Governor Sim Fubara's intention to probe the immediate past administration. The Governor of River State should also be reminded that the immediate past administration was where he, Sim Fubara, served as the Accountant General of the state. The fact that he is calling for a probe of an administration for which he served as the chief accounting officer of the state already speaks volume on his real intention for the said probe. Such actions already depicts a coloration of a hidden political motive in the inquiry and therefore has voided every outcome or reports of such panels of inquiry. Moreover, Governor Fubara alleged plan to demolish the State House of Assembly, a newly built structure, is an assault on democracy and an attempt to silence opposition voices in River State. The democratic process thrives on the existence of independent legislative bodies, and any attempt to undermine the autonomy should be condemned in the strongest possible terms. Lastly, we are deeply saddened and deeply concerned about the report suggesting that the Chief Executive Officer, Governor Fubara, is spending River State funds outside the realm of appropriation, a replication of corruption, abuse of power, and due process. The Act contravenes the principles of fiscal responsibility and accountability. Public funds should be managed prudently and in accordance with the provisions of the law. We urge the appropriate authorities to investigate these allegations thoroughly and take appropriate actions to safeguard the interests of the citizens of Nigeria and the citizens of River State. As a coalition of rights organizations, we firmly stand against illegal activities and actions of the chief executive of River State. We call on all citizens, civil society organizations, 
the leaders of the bar and the bench to join us in defending the rule of law, upholding democratic tenets and principles, and safeguarding our constitutionally guaranteed rights. We will take all necessary steps to oppose this desecration of our courts and the noble profession of law. Together, we can ensure that justice prevails and rights of the people in River State is protected. Thank you.